Hey, this is Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop. Welcome to part two of the Rogue Syndicate Parts Bone Shaker. So I'm sure you've been anxiously awaiting part two. Um, I actually had everything built up until the end of this video when I filmed or edited and posted the last video. I'm pretty famous for not completing anything. And most of my part ones never have a part two. Um, so I may not have a part three, but at least I got part two, so I'm getting better. So actually, I am working on it. It's on the bench right now. So when we left off, you could see that I had changed out the front forks from plastic to uh, brass and I'm using brass square tubing for the front frame rails so what I ran into was and I kind of alluded to it in the uh, previous video was I have a transmission tunnel because I actually have a transmission on this motor and this is not something that's common with most hot wheels you just have a motor or even if you buy a motor or a 3D printed one, you don't have a transmission to go with it. So I struggled a little bit, and I'm going to apologize ahead of time. 90% of this video is my freaking hands. Um, I just, my uh, GoPro, which I use for my overhead, um, I busted my card, so I couldn't film a lot uh, overhead. But anyway, so I made a transmission tunnel. I cut out the floor. I made the tunnel itself out of, um, I want to say, quarter inch styrene and I trimmed it down to make it look like a tunnel so it was tapered but when I went to put the motor in obviously I had to do the firewall as well so there's a lot of a lot of fitting so you can see it on the floor there or you could for a brief second before my freaking hands got in the way again um, the the issue was making sure that the when I put the cab on the tunnel matched whatever I cut out on the firewall and again I don't necessarily do a lot of <laughs> measuring so I do a lot by eye so I'm pretty much just going to slowly use my my Dremel tool on a cutoff disc to uh, whore out the hole a little bit and slowly bevel it in a half circle until I get what I'm looking for because and I'm still even at this point I'm not a hundred percent sure where the cab is going to sit so i know i mean i know location on the frame because i have the floor there but when i mocked it up and you'll see at the end the cab had a little bit of a rake the way i just kind of set it on there and the cab was raked forward which i thought was really kind of cool so i think i'm going to emulate that and make sure that its final state is that way so obviously the lower the front of my cab goes the higher my transmission tunnel has to be um, so i may have to go back and, and tweak this just a little bit but i think it's good enough because when i mocked it up nothing was um nothing seemed out of place i didn't have to fabricate anything didn't look like anyway so uh, again it's kind of hard to tell you know i'm kind of winging it and don't pay attention i know the frame rails are different lengths they're just stuck in there for right now so what I'm going to do is glue the transmission tunnel down because now I'm pretty confident that it is what it is and it's going to stay there. Um, I was a little hesitant um, previously to do that because I didn't want to um, glue it down and then find out I have to raise the tunnel or move something or, you know, so again, this is a very arduous and time consuming. Well, I say time consuming, but I only get a certain amount of time per week to actually work on stuff. And I'm always behind and I'm always, you know, I turn around, next thing I know it's a four horsemen build or I'm doing a Hertz, a Hertz build that's coming out uh, later this week, like a day before the actual four horsemen build. So it's just, there's always something in the way. So I don't have a ton of time, but it's still, regardless, a very time consuming and slow process because you want to make sure you do it right and not rush. So I always kind of stop. I, I think on things. You can kind of see those just slide into the square tubing that's already there, which is styrene. And it does work fine. The brass, you know, I'm going to end up gluing those in after I get them to the right length. 
um, that I'm happy with. It's going to accommodate the motor and the wheelbase that I'm looking for for my front wheels, which is a uh, axle tube. So uh, those do get cut. Now, um, a little bit of body prep. My original intention with this was just to make it really rusty. The more I work on it, the more I'm second guessing myself. Um, you know, I just kind of wanted to go with, with knowing that I had some styrene on the body and everything else. I was just going to go with a patched together look like somebody just grabbed the cab. If you're from New England, you know what I'm talking about. Just There's not much good salvageable parts around, but once in a while you do find a cab laying out and it's pretty beat, but the cab corner is usually gone or whatever. But um, that's kind of what I was thinking about is just, you know, salvaging the, the, the cab. And, you know, it's got a custom-made frame and everything else is new, but keeping it kind of the rat rod look, I'm not 100% sure of that now. So, I'm um, still undecided at this stage. Um, everything is in primer, which you'll see here in a second. But, uh, I'm just, I don't know. It's one of those things, I have a hard time deciding colors. And I end up changing my mind last minute, so I'm not going to commit and say it's going to be this color, because I don't know. <laughs> Um, it's with the styrene on there. I can't do a spectra flame or anything like that or a candy. So, but here's my Tamiya fine gray primer, which I love this stuff. And this is what it looks like. This is all mocked up. You see what I'm talking about with the cab, but I promise you part three will be out in about a week. Otherwise you guys can bust my balls. So I will catch you on the next one. <laughs>